Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our June of 2022 Global One Health Initiative webinar supported by the NIH Fogarty International Center. Our topic for today is microbial source tracking of environmental pathogens. And we will be hearing from Zimikel Gizal Workna from the University of Gondor in Ethiopia and also one of our One Health Eastern Africa Research Training Program, or OHART Fellows, and Dr. Yasser Sanad from the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff in the United States, and also an Ohio State University College of Veterinary Medicine alumni. I would like to briefly introduce both uh, Dr. Sanad and Zimikel before we begin. Zimikel is an assistant professor at the University of Gondor Institute of Public Health. He was recent, very recently defended his dissertation and completed his or is completing his PhD at the University of Gondor, supported by the Global One Health Initiative through the OHART program. Zimikel's research interests include public health issues that are most relevant to developing countries, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa, such as the childhood health and development impacts of microbial quality in the living environment, pathogen transmission at the human-animal environment interface, um, and environmentally transmitted enteric pathogens, as well as infection prevention. And Dr. Yasser Sanad is currently an associate professor of food safety at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, and has a second secondary appointment at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences Department of Epidemiology. He also serves as a zoonotic and one health technical advisor for FHI 360, which is a nonprofit human development organization dedicated to improving lives in lasting ways by advancing integrated locally driven solutions. And Dr. Sanad is an Ohio State University alumni, having completed his doctoral degree in veterinary preventive medicine through the College of Veterinary Medicine at The Ohio State University in 2011. And his professional program has largely been in veterinary medicine, food safety, molecular epidemiology of zoonotic diseases, particularly foodborne infectious diseases, antimicrobial resistance, and microbial pathogenesis, through applying the One Health approach. And his research focuses on microbial source tracking, antimicrobial resistance transmission, virulence factors of infectious pathogens from food animal sources in the production environment, and contact between food animals and humans to understand the epidemiological determinants of infectious zoonotic diseases and implement new interventions to help maintain public health as well as animal health through prevention and control. And it looks like we are currently, um, out, we have Zimikel with us now. And so Zimikel with that, you may go ahead and share your screen and get started when you're ready to begin. Okay, Dr. Laura. Hello, uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, sorry for the latest because of poor internet connection. Uh, you hear me, Dr. Laura? Yes, we can hear you wonderfully. Okay, thank you. So I am Zemikhail Do from University of Gondor. Uh, so I will be presenting um, a research titled uh, Fecal Indicator Bacteria Along Multiple Environmental Exposure Pathways. Uh, mainly water, food and soil, and intestinal parasites among uh, children in the rural northeast Ethiopia. Uh, here is my presentation outline. So as uh, introduction, uh, uh, children uh, in developing countries, especially in the rural settings, have uh, poor access to uh, water hygiene and sanitation services. Uh, for instance, uh, during uh, 2017, uh, nearly 
373 million people practice open defecation and another 2 billion people use fecally contaminated water for cooking purposes and other uh, domestic activities. And 10% of the world population also eat wastewater irrigated foods. And this poor access to uh, water hygiene and transition condition is associated with high burden of interest in fishing among children in developing countries, uh, among uh, enteric infection, uh, diarrhea, and parasite infections are the leading enteric infection among children in uh, developing countries. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, as per the uh, WHO 27 estimate, nearly 1.7 billion cases of childhood diarrhea uh, were uh, recorded, and more than uh, 1.5 billion people that are 24 percent of the world population are affected by the soil transmitted uh, infection. And uh, because of this, uh, children in rural settings in developing countries have multiple exposure pathways for enteric infection, mainly the living environment, the uh, water, the uh, soil, and ready to eat foods may be contaminated with fecal matter from animal and human sources that play a greater role for no access to improved water hygiene and sanitation services have multiple risk factor for interact infection. The probability of exposure uh, may be different across uh, environmental exposure pathways. Uh, this study was therefore uh, conducted to measure exposure of children to intestinal parasites along multiple environmental transmission pathways, mainly water, food, and soil, in rural settings of the East Denver district in Northwest uh, Ethiopia. Uh, more specifically, our research was focused to measure the bacteriological quality of uh, living environment, water, food, and soil, and to investigate the intestinal parasites among children. And it was also aimed to analyze the association between microbial quality of the living environment and intestinal parasite patient among children. So to address uh, these objectives, we used a community-based uh, cross-sectional study among uh, 300 using systematic random sampling technique. So from this included 372 rural households, we aesthetically collected 372 uh, water samples, 372 soil samples, and 372 uh, food samples for the purpose of analyzing the microbial quality of the living environment. Plus to that, we also collected uh, 372 stool samples from children, and we also collected 372 interviews and observation from 372 uh, households, just for the purpose of analyzing of the household behaviors that result high risk of exposure for enteric infection. And the environmental samples were analyzed for fecal indicator organisms, that is E. coli, using uh, membrane filter technique. And the stool samples were analyzed for overall parasites using weight mount and capocals technique. And the uh, household data were analyzed for the uh, behavior that result high exposure of children to enteric infection. And lastly, uh, we analyzed the link between uh, the wash condition and household behavior with intestinal parasitic infection using the multi-level binary logistic integration modeling. So the, the environmental samples were collected for the purpose of external exposure assessment, and the two samples were collected for the purpose of detecting of our parasites for the purpose of internal exposure assessment, and the household behavior were collected for the purpose of assessing child environment interactions that result high exposure of children to interaction. So we 
depends the outcome variables using uh, uh, this outcome assessment method for faker and Analyze E. coli in colony forming units, inter food and soil sample filter technique, and we took forming units of E. coli found in one for. Seems like we might be having some connectivity issues. Yeah. Zimiko, can yeah. you hear us? Uh, yeah, I am hearing you, but uh, I faced uh, a connectivity problem. Mm -hmm. Is it my slide is visible now? Um, this, the slides are no longer on, but if you have any um, issues with sharing and you're able to still uh, speak, feel free to continue. Okay. It looks like the slides are coming up now. Here, we can see them now. It's coming now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for the intestinal parasites, uh, we took children as having uh, intestinal parasites if one or if over of one or more parasites uh, were in, uh, investigated in stool samples. Uh, for childhood diarrhea, uh, we'd find uh, childhood diarrhea having three or more rules of water is tool in 24 hours. And for geophagy, that is mousing of soil contaminated material. So use this uh, outcome assessment meter to measure our uh, variables. And again, the quality of drinking water and the quality of ready to food is way determined based on the uh, standards of uh, water. For, for example, if zero coniforming units of this, if uh, 20 coniforming units of E. coli found in one gram of ready to food, that food was considered as satisfactory in quality. Again, we used the number of parasitic peak per gram of a stool to uh, define the intensity of intestinal parasitic mutation. For example, for ascaris uh, we considered uh, the light infection if the uh, between one out of 999, and we do similarly for other parasitic mutation as well. We also follow the fundamental principles throughout our research process, like uh, confidentiality, privacy, and minima risks. So looking at the results, our result uh, shows that uh, rural households have poor access for hygiene and sanitation uh, services. Uh, for instance, uh, nearly uh, one third of the rural uh, mothers uh, uh, kept their fingernail short and clean. So two thirds of the mothers uh, did not keep their uh, fingernail short and clean. And uh, more than half of the children also didn't keep keep their fingernail short and uh, clean. And two thirds of the children also practiced geophagy uh, that is mousing of soil contaminated material. And uh, Sixty-five percent of the rural households already practiced open defecation practices that will result fecal contamination of the living environment. And animal excreta uh, was also observed in seventy-three point one percent of the rural households. And the majority of our households, more than half of the our household, the rural households also collected drinking water from unprotected water sources. And the food utensils, 
in 31.7% of the households were accessible for haters that will cross contaminate the food stuffs. So with this uh, poor uh, access for water hydration condition, uh, we found that the 69.1% of the water samples were positive for E. coli and 67.5% of the food samples were also positive for E. coli and 83.0% of the soil samples were also positive for E. coli. And the level of E. coli contamination of water in 69.1% of the households were was above the uh, WHO guideline for drinking water, that is 0 0.4 units per 100 ml. Uh, this is because of the poor access for water hygiene and sanitation condition in areas where food disposal of human and animal excreta, including other wastes, the soil or the living environment will largely contaminate with uh, enteric pathogens. So this enteric pathogen will reach to uh, the water sources by the help of flood, wind, and animals as well. And in addition, the level of E. coli contamination of food in 37% of the households was above the microbial quality uh, guideline for ready to eat food that is uh, below less than 20, 24 minutes of E. coli per one gram of sample. Again, this high uh, prevalence of E. coli contamination can be due to because of uh, contaminated soil and fecally contaminated water. Uh, food may be contaminated from uh, soil during uh, um, some uh, reasons. For example, mechanical vectors may uh, uh, took the pathogen microorganism from uh, soil to food, or the water that we use for food preparation may also contaminate food sources. And the uh, unclean food utensils and poor hygiene condition also the main sources for. Uh, contamination of food with uh, fecal matter. Uh, we found that the uh, E. coli contamination pathways in soil, water, and food are interlinked. Uh, for instance, E. coli contamination of water was statistically associated with uh, the open defecation practice and presence of animal excreta in the living environment, and plus cleanness of the water storage container, uh, water sources, and method of drawing of water from the storage container also the other statistically significant variable for high concentration of E. coli in uh, drinking water. Uh, for soil, the open defecation fragment were uh, significantly associated with high concentration of E. coli in the uh, soil sample. And for the food, uh, for E. coli concentration of uh, food samples, the microbial quality of water, the microbial quality of the soil, open defecation practice, and animal excreta were associated with uh, high concentration of E. coli in uh, food samples. And in addition to the environmental um, uh, contamination, we also found that uh, nearly half of the children in the state area had one or more of intestinal parasite infection, and as carries number cloids, and schistosomiasis uh, schistos were the leading uh, micro intestinal parasite infections that we investigated. Uh, and from uh, children uh, having intestinal uh, parasites, uh, for schistosomiasis, the five children had heavy intensity of seven children uh, had moderate intensity. And we found that the high burden of intestinal parasitization among children were associated with uh, the microbial quality mothers and the hand hygiene practice of uh, children were statistically associated with high burden of intestinal parasitization infection in children. Here's the error bar indicates the 95% confidence interval of the odds ratio. 
And Mausing also will contaminate the material also statistically associated with high burden of intestinal parasite mutation among children, open defecation practice, and presence of animal excreta, and uh, poor access for drinking water services, and E. coli contamination of water, food, and soil will also statistically associated with high burden of intestinal parasite infection among children in the area. And the high burden of intestinal parasite infection in the area can be justified by because of fake um, up contamination of the living environment. In, in the area, open defecation practice is very common that will result fecal contamination of soil and the water and hands may be contaminated from the soil and uh, food will also contaminate from fecally contaminated soil or from fecal contaminated water or from fecal contaminated uh, hands. And children will acquire pathogenic microorganisms during the ingestion of the fecally contaminated water and food, sometimes soil. As I presented before, uh, large significant of zero R uh, children practiced geophagy uh, that is mousing of soil contaminated material so that will result uh, high exposure of intestinal parasite infection for children. Uh, so uh, our result, uh, our uh, research uh, had uh, some uh, limitations. For example, the burden of intestinal parasites was uh, measured in the dry season. So the prevalence of intestinal parasite infection that uh, I reported uh, didn't consider the prevalence in the wet season. And there might be also error in quantification of our parasite because of variation in our distribution of this tool. But to minimize this uh, problem, we evenly uh, distributed the stool sample during smear preparation. And the self-reported data for the household survey may uh, not be reliable since the study subjects may make the more socially acceptable answer. But as much as possible, we try to uh, collect the reliable information by using a valid and reliable data collection tool. And the generalizability of our results may be affected since the contamination uh, may vary in different settings. These are some of the limitations for our study. So from our findings, we can conclude that uh, an extensive fecal contamination of water, food and soil was documented in the study area and the potential sources of contamination of uh, the living environment where open defecation practice, anhygienic disposal of wastes, uh, poor animal uh, husbandry practice, poor water and food safety measures at household level are the main uh, sources for fecal contamination of the living environment. And the fecal contamination of water, food and soil uh, was linked with high burden of intestinal parasitic infection in the area and this implies that children in the rural northern Ethiopia had multiple exposure pathways for uh, intestinal parasite infection. So uh, based on our findings, we can recommend that the administration of anti-helminthic drugs is really very important. The local health authorities need to also strengthen those individual and committee level uh, water hygiene and sanitation interventions to prevent uh, the spread of entering fishing and associated health consequences. So it is uh, my presentation. Uh, thank you all for your attention. Thank you, Zimikal, for presenting these very important results and very interesting. And congratulations again on your recent defense.